Hello everyone, my name is Toby Horroboy and today we're going to be making a Freddle animatronic from FNAF 4. We're using an LOL Elmo as the base and of course the first thing we have to do is skin him. I have a whole other video of that if you'd like to see it, but for now, let's get into it. So the Freddles are the little guys that sit on the bed. Ideally I'd make all three of them, but I only have one of this particular Elmo and I don't like my chances of finding another one. Just the shipping to Australia is upwards of $50 and I'm not doing that. I found this one for $4 in an op shop and that is a fine price for an Elmo. Anyway, now that he's skinned, we're gonna start building up our endoskeleton. He has this fun textured metal as his core. There would be so many different ways to do this, but I thought that it looked suspiciously like a pop tube, so a pop tube we shall use. I got these from Kmart and only used about three quarters of one of them, so the rest are just floating around the house. Unfortunately, the diameter was a little bit too small to cover his current limbs, so I had to cut the supports off to get them to fit. We took this opportunity to sand the plastic. Hard plastic like this doesn't like being painted or glued, it just won't stick very well, so we take our rotary tool and sand down everywhere that's going to be painted or glued, which is most of him. Then we can go and Plastidip our pop tube. Plastidip is an aerosol primer that basically sprays liquid plastic instead of spray paint, and in this house we prime things before we paint them. Once it's fully dry, we cut it into small sections to wrap around his arms and legs. You can see that some parts really don't meet at the back, but that's okay. We glue them all down and any gaps get filled with glue. When it's painted, it'll look like welding. You're just going to have to trust me on this one. The next part of his end skeleton that we're going to focus on is his head, starting specifically with his mouth. Now we need to square out his jaw. We pattern it and cut out two pieces from EVA foam. One of them has a bit of extra foam in the middle to help fill out under the jaw. We glue them together with contact cement and tidy up the edges with our rotary tool. Then we glue that piece onto Elmo. The inside of his mouth is going to be exposed and we can't leave it looking like that. To make it presentable, we trace out the shape onto some one millimeter craft foam, cut it out and glue it in. We need to repeat this process for his upper jaw. This is a bit more complicated because honestly, Freddles have a really weird head shape. Like there are a few FNAF animatronics with weirdly shaped heads, but I think the Freddles win. What is even going on there? We cut out three pieces of EVA foam this time and glue them all together. This Freddle is missing a chunk of his face, so we carve out the basic shape of that with a snap off knife. Then we round everything out with the rotary tool. Because he's so banged up, a fair bit of foam will be showing and it needs to be as smooth as possible to help it look like metal. For the missing chunk of his upper mouth, I wanted the metal to look really messed up. I thought that just cutting that piece out might leave the area looking a bit plain and I love to add texture wherever I can. We marked where we wanted the damage to come to and then took the hot knife and carved out that area. And that's burning the foam so it'll look different to any other exposed foam or plastic bits. Then we can glue that piece on and take a look at the rest of the head. We're gonna make the top part of his head out of so many circles of EVA foam. Technically they're ovals but only just. We cut them out and glue them together in a stack. Then we can start sanding it down with the rotary tool. See how the sanding pad is sliding around on there? Yeah, it is not supposed to do that, but I hadn't made it to the shops yet to buy a new mandrel. Please use power tools safely. Once we're happy with the head shape, we can mark out his eye socket placement. We carve the basic shape for these out and then sand them down with the rotary tool and by hand with a sanding stick. Now we get to use foam clay, which I love working with. We put it in the eye sockets to help even them out. The foam between his eyes and on the left side of his head is going to be exposed metal and the seam lines from the EVA foam are pretty noticeable. We can apply a very thin layer of foam clay to cover those. Once it's dry, we can sand it back and then add more foam clay and sand it until it's up to scratch. The next part we're going to work on are his eyes to go in those lovely eye sockets. I had some plastic ping pong balls left over from who knows what and those are great for eyes. We take one and cut it in half and then carefully cut them down to size and sand the edges. We also need to cut off the back of Elmo's head so that our headpiece fits on better and remove the plastic that's supposed to be missing on the freddle. And then I decided that I wanted to add lights to the eyes and that caused some problems but we'll get to that bit later. I've never added lights to an animatronic before because there's never been enough space behind the eyes to add any kind of light. Because we made the whole headpiece here, we can make as much space as we need. I got a light up letter from Kmart and we rip it apart to get the light and battery box out of it. We measure how much space we're going to need in the back of his head and carve that area out with a knife. The backs of the eye sockets had to be removed and then some parts had to be re-added with foam clay so there weren't any weird jagged shadows. It's kind of a tight fit, but it works. At least for now. Don't worry, we'll be revisiting visiting the eye lights. Anyway, it's time to paint the eyes. The handle of my screwdriver was the perfect size for his pupils, so we traced that out onto each eye. I have pretty shaky hands, so I used a Posca paint pen to draw the outline because it's a bit steadier. Then we fill the rest of the eye in with black paint. The back of his head can't just be left open like that, so we need to make a cover for it. We cut out two rectangles of craft foam and glue them together. Then we glue in a small rectangle of stretch fabric
fabric to act as a hinge. The foam piece is long enough to tuck into the other side. Craft foam is very flexible, so the light pack can be easily accessed. It's finally time to attach that headpiece. We sand two dents for his original eye stalks and glue it on with contact cement. Now we remove some of the excess plastic around the damaged part of his mouth with the rotary tool. There's a gap between the upper mouthpiece and the upper headpiece that we patch with foam clay so you can't see through his head. We also cover any visible plastic in that area with foam clay so that the textures match. The final thing we do on the head for now is extend parts of his mouth with foam clay to make them somewhat symmetrical. Looking at the rest of him, we need to pat out his limbs because they're way too thin. FNAF animatronics have these very distinctly shaped segments for their arms and legs and we're gonna replicate that here. Now this is a big day for me because I finally get to use some of my tiny pieces of packing foam. I never get to use any of my weird little offcuts. I used the same technique to make plush trap and he was way too big for these little bits of foam. How exciting. We cut each piece to size and glue it on with contact cement. We're trying to match the reference image as closely as possible. Then we can use the rotary tool to round out each segment. I glued and sanded the upper section of the limbs before starting the lower section so that I'd have a better range of motion with the rotary tool. Once we're happy with the shape, we clean up some of the foam with scissors. This foam was protective packaging from a delivery we got at some point and I scavenged it to use as craft materials. For exactly this, FNAF limbs. So it's probably not really meant to be sanded, but it works too well not to. His arms and legs are done for now, so we need to go back and fix something I completely forgot about. I made his inner lower mouth, but just didn't do the upper one. Now's a good time though, so we cut it out of craft foam and glue it in with contact cement. I made it way too big for some reason, so we cut that down to size and blend it in using the rotary tool. While we're here, we're also going to use the hot knife on the foam clay we added to texture it. The next thing we're going to make are his paws. There are a few different models for the frettles and some of them have fabric pores but I really liked the metal look so that's what we're going with. We pattern them and cut them out of EVA foam and craft foam. EVA foam has this texture on one side that definitely has a purpose but is nothing but a nuisance to me personally. We don't want that on our frettle so we sand it off. The next part was kind of finicky. This Elmo kicks his legs up and down which is fine when his feet are made of fabric. But when they're made of something stiff like foam, you need to make sure that they're not going to hit each other too much. Elmo has a button on each foot, so we couldn't just cut the original feet back to make room for the new ones. Instead, we had to make them as small as possible while still being the right scale and attach them so they're pointing slightly outwards. I did rigorous testing with paper and duct tape to figure out the exact placement. The original feet are going to sit in a groove in the foam so the buttons can still be pressed. It is so important that they're in exactly the right spot because otherwise his leg movement is going to be all messed up. We carve out the grooves with the rotary tool. The craft foam is going to act as the top part of the foot that covers the original feet. We cut a hole for the ankles in the craft foam and start gluing them onto the EVA foam base. Now we can tidy up the edges with the rotary tool. We use contact cement to glue his feet in, being really careful not to glue the buttons down because we need those to work. Then we glue on the rest of the top layer. Testing that, it looks like he's working just fine. I mean, he's so top heavy because of his head that he can't sit back up, but we'll fix that. Not yet, but soon. For now, we're going to start the painting process. The first step is to prime him. We used Mod Podge mixed with water as a primer because foam is super porous and doesn't take paint well. When we prime our surfaces, the paint will look better and stick better. We do about four coats on every bit of foam that's going to be exposed. Also, his left thigh only has one original piece of plastic in there instead of two. I was a bit rough with it while sanding the padding down and disconnected the pop tube from his leg. So we're just pouring some glue in there and using contact cement and then more of the Tarzan's grip for good measure. Yeah, that's never coming off again. We're gonna be spray painting him and we don't want to get paint all over his torso. So we wrap him up in a nice little glad wrap cocoon. The center of his foam limbs get covered with electrical tape and we can take him outside and spray paint him silver. Once he's fully dry we unwrap him and it's time to do the fun painting. This silver is much too shiny. A lot of the FNAF animatronics have some level of grime on them and we want to convey that here. We start by painting on a black wash and then removing most of it with paper towel. This generally darkens the silver and creates shadows in the crevices. Then we need to add some rust. The frettles aren't super rusty or dirty, but there's definitely rust there if you zoom all the way in. We use two different rust colors and dry brush them on one at a time. I use these specific paints for plush trap and I really love how they look. They actually belong to my awesome housemate Joey who has once again let me borrow them. 
Thank you, Joey. We paint the rust over all of the metal parts, making sure we add more in areas that would probably be rustier if he wasn't plastic. Joints rust, right? You put oil on the joints and then it rusts over time. I put extra rust around any moving parts or in any spots that might be harder to clean if he were really old and made completely of metal. I admittedly painted on way more rust than I was intending to, but it's also the best rust paint I've ever done. Probably even the best paint job I've ever done. And I did it while watching My Little Pony Equestria Girls. Maybe that's the secret to good rust paint. Okay, moving on. I mentioned earlier that we were having weighting issues because of the extra weight on his head. We need to counterweight that with something. If the feet were covered in fabric, I could put something heavy in them to disguise it. I also tried opening up his torso casing, but that wasn't happening. The only solution I could think of is to make a little weight pack to go on his butt. Lower back. But it has to be able to contain something heavy enough to counterweight it, fit seamlessly along the body so it doesn't stop him from rolling around, and it needs to not look strange. We start by making the casing from EVA foam and we sand it into the right shape. We carve out the inside to house the weights. Looking around my craft room, the heavier thing I could find that I was willing to part with was a fingerling arm. In my defense, the plastic is kind of heavy. We cut it down a bit to make it fit better and tested it, but it was not heavy enough. So I went for a wander around the backyard and I found a concrete block. I broke it into pieces and tested those, but they were also too light and they took up too much space. Then I found some glass beads that I have and tried those. And that was pretty close. The weighting is much better, but he still can't quite get back up on his own. And this was so incredibly frustrating for me because I just didn't have anything that would work. So I just put it all aside for the time being. Besides, to make sure that any additional pieces aren't gonna mess the weighting up further, we need to actually make those pieces. I'm talking about his ears, hat, and teeth. The first thing we're gonna do here is mark where his ears are gonna sit. That'll help inform the size of everything. Then we can drill two holes into his head, one for each ear. His ears don't sit flush with his head, so we're gonna attach them to some aluminium wire and have that be partially visible. We cut them to size and glue them in. Also, just because I've had so many comments about it before, I'm not horribly mispronouncing that, I'm just Australian. Everyone says aluminium here, it's even spelt differently to how it is in America. But it's the same stuff. Next, we pattern our ears and cut them out of craft foam. Each ear is going to be three pieces, the front border, the inside bit, and the back. We just need these for waiting purposes at the moment, so that's all we're doing on them for now. Ears are usually one of the last things we do anyway, but we can make his little top hat now. So we pattern it and cut it out. The body of the hat and the crown a one millimeter craft foam. We glue the sides of the body together. Then we cut the brim out of a five millimeter high density foam. Now we glue the crown of the hat on and smooth down the seams. So that there's more surface area for the glue to stick to and to reinforce the structure of the hat, we glue in a piece of scrap foam. We glue the brim on and we've got a tiny hat. To get it ready for painting, we prime it with a few coats of Mod Podge mixed with water. Then we paint the whole thing black. I imagine that the top hat is also made of metal and therefore has some rust and wear on it. We dry brush on some silver and our two rust colors, adding extra around the edges. We'll leave that for now and have a look at his teeth. I absolutely could have just used the leftover teeth from Plush Trap here, but Plush Trap has green rust on his teeth and the freddles don't, so I just committed to making more of them. I have to say, not really worth it. So we start by spray painting some barbecue skewers white. To weather them, we dry brush on some silver and both of our rust colors. Then I marked where I wanted each tooth to sit and drilled the holes. This was much easier on Plush Trap because the mouthpieces weren't attached to his head, but because this freddle has that chunk taken out of his cheek, we needed to do it this way. Kind of inconvenient, but not impossible to work with. And we made way too many teeth. I always make a few more than I think I'll need just in case, but I made 55 and we only ended up using 18. Whoops. At least we'll have enough teeth for next time. They looked a bit off though, and I realized that it's because I forgot to do a black wash. Normally I do that before the rust paint, but this is fine too. Now we can mark out how long they need to be and cut them down with the rotary tool. I know I do everything with the rotary tool, but that's because it's very versatile and also my best friend. Then we glue in our teeth. There are little bits of foam visible where I drilled away too much, so we can go in with my tiniest paintbrush to clean that up. I wanted there to be some definition around the teeth, so we dry brush on some more black and rust. So that's all of the things that might make him even more top heavy done. Except for his hands, but let's not think about that. It's time to test that weight pack again. My wonderful partner Albedo is a genius and suggested that I use fishing sinkers. The whole point of those is that they're weights. They're 275 a pack at Kmart and they solved all of my problems. We put them in the casing and seal it up with contact cement and foam. Then we glue in an extra wedge of EVA foam to help it sit flush with the body 
and glue the weight pack on. For some added stability, we also glue on a rectangle of black stretch fabric. With the light hat and ears accounted for, that weight pack works perfectly. Now let's take a look at his awful little hands. I was kind of nervous about making these because I've never made FNAF style metal hands. So this was something new and different for me. And I knew straight away that I didn't want to be sculpting all of those pieces from scratch. It was going to be much easier to modify some beads. So that's what we did. I did a spotlight trip for some wooden beads to use as the base. Wood takes paint much better than most plastics, so I specifically wanted wooden beads. The selection was a bit limited, but we can work with that. Our Freddle's hands are made from two types of bead, the longer piece for the finger segments and the ball piece for the joint part. Our long beads are much too long, so the first thing we do is cut them down with the rotary tool and pliers. Then we sand them down with the rotary tool, trying to make them all the same size and shape. The round beads are perfect, so all we have to do with them is sand them to get that finish off. This was a long process and I went through quite a few gloves. Now we touch up the beads with a diamond engraver head to remove any harsh sanding lines. Then we can skewer them, put them outside and spray paint them. While that's drying, let's make his palms. We pattern it and cut two from both EVA foam and craft foam. It needs to be two pieces so we can sandwich his original hands in between them. The pieces are small enough that I had to cut down his original hands. We sand off the texture from the EVA foam and glue our pieces together, making sure to put the sanded bit on the inside and to leave the middle of the palm unglued. Now we can tidy up the edges with the rotary tool. I did a few coats of Mod Podge to seal it and then spray painted them outside. As you can see, our palms and finger bits are that lovely shiny silver, so we need to make them look gross. We do a black wash and both of our rust colors. At this point, I remember that the Freddles have two distinct torso pieces and I didn't do anything about that earlier. So we rough up where the split in the torso will be with some sandpaper, paint it black and Mod Podge it. Okay, back to the fingers. I wanted to use beads so that the fingers would be poseable. Each finger is going to have a core of aluminium wire. We cut our wire into six short lengths and crimp the ends down so the beads can't come off. Then we thread the beads on. We mark where the fingers are going to sit and drill out space for them. I glued the top of the wire to the end bead so that they wouldn't slip around too much. And that wire sticking out the end was strikingly clean compared to the rest of the finger, so we paint it to match. Then we trim our wire to length and glue them in. We glue around the base of the lowest beads as well to stop our fingers from flopping all over the shop. Every day I utter such normal sentences. We put some glue into his hands and slide them onto his wrists. Now I took a closer look at the hands. Like a really close look. And they have rivets on them. Which of course we're gonna add because I love little details like that. But I didn't have anything small enough for them. So I went to Bunnings and got the tiniest wall panel nails I could find. And I have like 190 of these left over if anyone has any suggestions for what to do with them. Do not say Freddle Army, we have other things to make. But for this, we cut the heads off with a wire cutter. I left a few millimeters there past the head, but not much. Then we take one of the nails and poke a hole for where we want our faux rivets to go. We dab on some glue and carefully put them in place. This was a bit fiddly because they are so so tiny, but I think it really adds to it. And because they're bronze in color, we didn't have to worry about painting them. We are so close to starting the fabric part of this. But before that, we need to fix up his head. Remember how we did the lights in his eyes earlier? Yeah, I hated that. The light I used was really temperamental and I was just over it. Thankfully, it's a pretty easy fix. To replace the light itself, we bought some LED candles from Kmart. They're a fair bit bigger than our original light, but they're brighter and they're much more reliable. To help them fit better, we start by pulling off the flame. Then we cut out some more height in the head cavity. It still didn't really fit though, and I wanted a light behind each eye so they'd be nice and bright. So I did exactly what the packaging and warning labels told me not to do. And seriously, you should never ever do this. It is incredibly dangerous because of the button cell battery. I ripped the casing open so that I had only the necessary electronic parts and then cut any excess plastic away. And that worked perfectly. They both fit in the head and stay in place just fine. I cannot begin to tell you how glad I am that I decided to redo the lights. But his head cover no longer fits, so we need to remake it. We cut two pieces out of craft foam and use contact cement to glue them together. Then we cut out another piece of black stretch fabric to act as the hinge and glue it all together. I did another waiting test with his ears and hat duct taped to his head just in case, and it's all working well. After all of that, we can finally glue his eyes in. And we're good, his base is all done. So, onto the fabric. We're gonna start with his torso first. We wrap him in glad wrap and then duct tape. Just a note, he's gonna have that horizontal gap in the middle, but it can't continue all the way around him because otherwise the weighted bit on his back will be super visible and it'll look really bad. We mark where the middle is on his front and back and where our side seams are gonna go. I always label my pieces so I'm not horribly confused while cutting and sewing them. Then we cut the duct tape pattern off him. I only ever use half of the pattern and just cut it on the fold so it's symmetrical. Because this Elmo animatronic has such a curved back, some of these pieces 
pieces are not gonna sit flat on the fabric. To fix this, we cut a line into it and we'll be sewing a dart there soon. I don't wanna waste any fleece, so we do a quick mock up with some old scrap fabric to make sure everything fits. That's looking decent, except for the horrible fabric choice, so let's cut it out for real. Let's start with the bottom half of his torso. The fabric we're gonna be using is just a brown fleece. We cut out our front and back pieces on the fold so there's no center seam. Then we machine sew up the darts on the back piece. Now we pin both pieces onto the body and hand sew up the seam. I always use a back stitch for projects like this because I want my stitching to be really strong and because it's my favorite stitch. That's his bottom half on, so let's focus on the top. I was originally gonna have some kind of closure on the back, probably Velcro so we can access the battery pack, but I didn't wanna add any extra bulk that might make it hard for him to roll back. That's pretty much all this Elmo can do, so we can't take that away from him. But fleece has a bit of give to it, so we don't even need to add a closure. We just need to make the top half longer at the back. So we cut our pieces out of our fleece and machine sew up the darts. We pin it onto him and ladder stitch up the side and shoulder seams. You can see that we've angled the fabric so the back of the bottom piece tucks into the top. And that's so we can get to the battery pack and it hides the weight pack we added. It's not 100% accurate to what the freddle looks like, but at least it's functional. I also had to add more black paint to his tummy so you can't see the silver or white. Now, the freddles all have a patch of lighter fur on their chest. So we pattern it, cut it out of fleece and pin it onto him. Then we hand sew it on. To hide the stitches, we fluff up up the fibers around them, including on any seams. I do this for all seams on every animatronic, but I'm just gonna show it now so you know it happens. With his torso all together, we can glue it into place, making sure that the edge is rolled under. We start with the center front and work our way around. It's important that we leave the back and the very back part of the sides unglued so we can pull the fabric aside to get to the battery pack, like this. We're gonna do the head next, and it's basically the same concept as the body, but harder to do because the head is so curved. We cover him in glad wrap, duct tape, and clear tape for where I need to be able to see what I'm doing, and mark out the borders of where the fabric will sit. This freddle has a lot of his head exposed, but we also need to make sure that you can't see the head cap for the lights. So we've got the entire top piece, the muzzle, and the lower jaw, and it all needs to fit together or it'll look silly. Once we're happy with the fit and the mock-up looks decent, we can start cutting it out. We machine sew up the darts on the back of his head and then cut out his muzzle. We sew the two together and pin them to his head. Now we cut out the lower jaw and machine sew up the darts. That looks like it's all fitting well. He doesn't have any fabric on his neck and I didn't really paint that area before. So we touch it up with a silver paint pen. And of course we do a black wash and our rust colors so it matches the rest of him. Now it's time to glue his face on. I started with the muzzle seam because I wanted it to really conform to the shape of the foam under it. If it's not stuck down there, it'll distort the head shape. We also need to cut a hole for his ear wires and glue those back in. I had to take them out to fit his head fabric properly, but we'll be needing them soon. Then we move to his eye and work our way around the top of his head. Now we glue his upper jaw skin down. We also ladder stitch his head onto his body at the back. I have this ongoing problem where I always add extra fabric because I'm worried I'll make something too small. Like I'll measure and pattern it so it'll fit perfectly, and then I'll cut out extra anyway. And I really need to work on that, but for now it just means that we need to cut the excess down as we go. And we cut down his lips. Are they lips? His gums? We cut them so you can see some of the exposed metal from straight on and glue his skin down. Then we glue the underside of his jaw and that's a face. I did a test run to make sure I could still get the lights into his head and I can. The last thing we need to do here is make a closure for that loose head skin. We do this by cutting down some Velcro into little ovals. One side gets stuck to the head with contact cement and we hand sew the other side onto his skin. We have two spots with Velcro to keep the fabric in place. We glue down the last little bit of fleece and that's his head done. Now. Now, let's finish up those ears from earlier. They are not part of the head. In my mind, this is an entirely separate piece. The foam is already cut out, so we start by gluing the pieces together. It's important to leave a little channel between the front and back pieces so the wire has somewhere to go. Then we tidy up the edges with the rotary tool. In the render I'm using for reference, his inner ears are black rather than the light color of his tummy. Honestly, I just prefer this render. The in-game model has fabric hands and feet, which is fine, but I wanted to make those out of metal, so black inner ears it is. We cut our pieces out of fleece, making the front and back pieces a bit bigger than the foam. I wanted the inner ear to look indented compared to the outer shell, so we glue it in first. And we really press it down into those edges. Then we glue the front piece on top of it. Finally, we glue the back piece on. We trim off any excess fleece so there's just enough to cover the sides of the foam. We put a little bit of glue along the edges and press the fleece together to seal it. Now we put some glue into the wire cavity and glue his ears on. He looks so much better with ears. Every time it's like the ears go on and the animatronic starts to look like something and not just a strange little
little creature on my desk. While we're here, we can glue his hat on. And hey, that's almost a freddle. He looks like a FNAF character now is what I'm saying. We are almost done, but we still need to do his limbs, nose, and weathering. Let's give his arms and legs some skin. I started with the upper arms. Theoretically, you could do them all at once, but each piece needs a different pattern and I didn't want to get them mixed up. So we make our pattern with glad wrap and clear tape so we can see the shape of the foam underneath. Then we cut the pieces out of our brown fleece and pin them on. We hand sew up any seams and carefully glue the fleece into place. One thing to note is that we want to have some amount of the silver endoskeleton and foam showing on each segment. We did not put all that work into shaping and painting it to totally cover it up. Then I moved to his forearms and repeated the process. Then we do the upper legs and finally his lower leg. Really convenient that his lower left leg is just straight metal, that's so kind of it. And with that, all of his skin is on. His face really does look a bit odd without his little nose, so we'll fix that up for him. We pattern it and cut it out of black fleece. And I really wanted to put a squeaker in there, truly I did. But I couldn't find one small enough when I made plush trap and our Freddle's nose is even smaller again. I don't think they even make them that small. So we'll just have to work with what we've got. We pin it into place and ladder stitch it on. We put a tiny bit of stuffing in there to give it some shape and he's looking so much better. This is the final step. We need to make him look kind of old and worn. His fabric sections are too clean and they don't match the metal parts. So we mix up an acrylic wash and start dabbing it on. In particular, we focus on the edges of the fabric around any exposed metal. Like something must have happened for the metal to be visible, surely the fabric is damaged in some way. Our reference image shows a hole in his chest. We couldn't put an actual hole because I'd probably managed to cut every wire in there, so I opted to paint a dark stain in its place. We are almost at the reveal. Withered Bonnie is our next animatronic project so I hope you guys are excited for him. I haven't forgotten about the Dread Ducky and Kalki, I'm just so excited about Withered Bonnie that I can't think about making anything else. Also, my apologies for my voice in the last third of this video, I am sick. So very sick, but I'm beyond excited for our next project. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Okay, here's our freddle.